Hi everybody. So if you ask me, and I'm sure lots of people will agree, the steam engine is singly the most important invention to propel mankind into the industrial age. It changed transportation and manufacture and life in a myriad of other ways. The origins of the steam engine can be traced back to the ancient Greeks and Egyptians who experimented with simple devices to harness steam power. But it wasn't until the 17th century that significant strides were made in harnessing steam for practical applications. Thomas Savory, an English engineer, developed the first crude steam-powered device in 1698 known as the Miner's Friend, and it was designed to pump water out of the mines. It was Thomas Newcomen, though, who made the substantial leap in steam engine technology in the early 18th century. In 1712, he introduced what he called the atmospheric steam engine, also designed to pump water from mines, but it used atmospheric pressure to move a piston within a cylinder. Newcomen's engine became wildly used for pumping water out of mines, but was relatively inefficient. The watershed moment in the evolution of the steam engine came with the innovations of James Watt of the 18th century, and in 1765 he patented his first significant improvement, a separate condenser that prevented steam loss during each cycle. Now James Watt was prolific and determined and he loved to patent things, which is ironic because he himself saw patents as a way of stifling innovation rather than anything else, but he wasn't going to pay any license fees so he had to find workarounds and methods that would obviate patents were already in place. Because the big change came from changing that up and down motion of a beam into the rotary motion that we know and love. And of course, the simplest way of doing that is with a crank. Unfortunately, the crank had already been patented by James Picard in 1780. And so Watt had to find a way around it so he didn't pay the fee. And of course, he promptly patented it. The way around he found was the sun and planet gear. So being absolutely fascinated by this, of course, I turned to Tinkercad and drew this up. Now, this is freely available on Thingiverse, but be warned, it is a work in progress because we're kind of just exploring these issues right now. But I've printed it off and I've put it all together. And there's the planet gear behind that Conrod. And there's the sun gear that gets um, attached through to that wheel there. Now, normally, of course, you can drive that wheel through the conrod. Oh, I've got a little handle on there so we can drive the wheel if we want and drive the conrod from the wheel, whichever way around. This isn't the only thing that Watt actually investigated, but this was the best option he could come up with. So as the beam goes up and down, of course, the conrod is forced up and down, and the gears mean that the conrod has to travel around the planet and the sun, driving the wheel. Now, it's reportedly not as efficient as a crank, but it does have something else that a crank doesn't have. When a crank goes up and down, one up, one down, you get a one revolution of the wheel. When this goes up and down, you get a different resolution on the wheel depending on the gearing. So you have a gearing that's going on with this that can affect the output of the machine based on the input of the piston going up and down. We can increase the torque or change the speed. This, of course, is now known as epicyclic gearing, and it is the heart of planet and gears, planet and sun systems that you find in things like a drill. And we've made many of these when we've been using them in things like generators. But this one, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it, if anything, because it was really an exploration of James Watt, but it is certainly a very interesting mechanism. But as I say, I've made it available, but it is a work in progress. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.